Ladies and gentlemen, you may have heard that some people down in the prep school wrote some racial slurs on some message boards. If you haven't heard that, I wanted you to hear it from me. Hi, everybody. This is the Pre-Accident Podcast, and I'm Todd Conklin. This is a pre-accident investigation safety moment, leadership moment. I think it's probably a good way to talk about this one. Um, Yesterday, which would have been September 28th, 2017, Lieutenant General J.B. Silveria, who's the administrator of the United States Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, met with his entire organization to, in fact, challenge them over an event, a violation of policy, a violation of process, a violation of ethics, a violation of their culture. This is an example of a choice between blaming and punishing and learning and improving. Listen carefully. This is worth listening to. If you're outraged by those words, then you're in the right place. That kind of behavior has no place at the prep school, it has no place at USAFA, and it has no place in the United States Air Force. You should be outraged not only as an airman, but as a human being. And I'll tell you that the appropriate response for horrible language and horrible ideas, the appropriate response is a better idea. So that's why I'm here. That's why all these people are up here on the staff tower. So let me have everybody who's up here please pull forward to the rails. Also, there are so many people here, they're lining the outsides along the windows. These are members of the faculty, coaching staff, AOCs, AMTs, from the airfield, from my staff, from my headquarters. All aspects of the 10th Air Base Wing, all aspects that make up USAFA, and the United States Air Force Academy. Leadership is here. You heard from Brigadier General Goodwin. Brigadier General Armacost is here. Colonel Block from the Athletic Department is here. Mr. Knowlton is in Washington, D.C. right now. That's why they're here. That's why we're all here, because we have a better idea. Some of you may think that that happened down in the prep school and doesn't apply to us. I would be naive, and we would all be naive to think that everything is perfect here. We would be naive to think that we shouldn't discuss this topic. We would also be tone deaf not to think about the backdrop of what's going on in our country. Things like Charlottesville and Ferguson, the protests in the NFL. That's why we have a better idea. One of those ideas, the dean brought people together to discuss Charlottesville. Because what we should have is a civil discourse and talk about these issues. That's a better idea. We received outstanding feedback from that session at Charlottesville. But I also have a better idea. And it's about our diversity. And it's the power of the diversity, the power of the 4,000 of you and all of the people that are on the staff tower and lining the glass, the power of us as a diverse group, the power that we come from all walks of life, that we come from all parts of this country, that we come from all races, we come from all backgrounds, gender, all makeup, all upbringing. The power of that diversity comes together and makes us that much more powerful. That's a much better idea than small thinking and horrible ideas. We have an opportunity here, 5,500 people in this room, to think about what we are as an institution. This is our institution and no one can take away our values. No one can write on a board and question our values. No one can take that away from us. So just in case you're unclear on where I stand on this topic, I'm going to leave you with my most important thought today. 
If you can't treat someone with dignity and respect, then you need to get out. If you can't teach someone from another gender, whether that's a man or a woman, with dignity and respect, then you need to get out. If you demean someone in any way, then you need to get out. And if you can't treat someone from another race or a different color skin with dignity and respect, then you need to get out. Reach for your phones. I'm serious. Reach for your phones. Okay, you don't have to reach for your phones. I'm going to give you an opportunity to reach for your phones. Grab your phones. I want you to videotape this so that you have it, so that you can use it. So that we all have the moral courage together. All of us on the staff tower, lining the glass, all of us in this room. This is our institution. And if you need it, and you need my words, then you keep these words. And you use them, and you remember them, and you share them, and you talk about them. If you can't treat someone with dignity and respect, then get out. I know we talk a lot about choices. And I spend a lot of my time talking about deliberate improvement. This is a really, really important example of the things we talk about. When Lieutenant General Silveria was met with this violation of their process, he really had two choices. He could respond emotionally, he could blame and punish, or he could respond towards improvement. He could deliberately improve. He could deliberately make this an opportunity to learn and get better. And that's what he did. In fact, what you just heard is what deliberate leadership sounds like. And it's not hard. I mean, this was hard. And it's not complicated. And this is a pretty complicated situation. But the choice he made strategically as a leader to learn and improve and to get better from this and the support he gave his people to actually hold on and do the improvement is worth our time. That's really what we talk about when we talk about understanding this new view. And this example was too good and too important not to share with you. I hope you've thought about this because it's very thoughtful. And I hope you can apply what happened here to organizations all over the world. That's the safety moment for today. Have as much fun as you possibly can. Learn something new every single day. And for goodness sakes, be safe. 